Good morning, this is Cheryl, and we're about to make a version of Cheryl's lasagna. I figured I must have a signature dish along the way, as I've been cooking, love to cook. So anyway, in honor of the Italian half of my family, which belongs to my mother, Lydia, uh, I feel like by doing this video, which may or may not be cheesy, I don't know, uh, I feel like I'm honoring my Italian side of my family, especially my Italian grandmother, Amalia Lago, and my Italian grandfather, Janine Miron. I, a little aside, I did ask my mom one time if Grandma Amalia Lago was a very good cook, and she said no. And I was so shocked because I always had the impression that anybody who's Italian and a woman would be just a great cook. But she said no. Grandma did not cook well, but good enough to feed her family, six kids, etc. So anyway, today I'm going to do a version of Cheryl's lasagna. And this is a Christmas video that Dan is shooting. And also it is in honor of my daughter, Tracy, who loves to cook, but doesn't always have a lot of time. So who knows, when you make lasagna, you have to have the right utensils. And who knows, there may be something in her Christmas stocking that will help her make lasagna. This video is for Tracy as a part of her Christmas present, and I feel honored to speak to my daughter, Nurse of the Year, wonderful person, great mother, wonderful wife, wonderful daughter. She was a lovely grand granddaughter also. So here's to the morning coffee and it's gonna fortify my morning so I can show Tracy my version of lasagna. Thank you. First of all, you need a good lasagna pan. And who knows, maybe some such thing might appear in daughter Tracy stocking. Who knows? I'm going to show you the ingredients that I use for the sauce in the in the beginning. I have, you know, some people say only use one pound of Italian sausage, but guess what? I use two pounds of Italian sausage because of mild Italian sausage. It just makes it meatier and better. So I use two pounds of Ital mild Italian sausage. Part of the ingredients is I use a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I use two cans of 14 ounce diced tomatoes. I use one six ounce can of tomato paste. What else do and I use fresh basil and I also use a smattering of dried basil. Also with the I use I love Pinot Noir wine to go into the sauce and where is my oh here it is and grated parm cheese that's just in the in the bottle. You can use great, real grated parm cheese, but guess what? This works just as well or better. So, those are my ingredients. Jeez. Gosh, I almost forgot the cheese part <laughs> that goes in between the layers of the lasagna. Maybe I need another glass of wine, I don't know. But anyway, I in love Ricotta. I love a lot of cheese. I like it cheesy in a good way. 
I use ricotta cheese. This is uh, a 30 ounce package. And I also use cottage cheese. I love to mix up the cheeses. It just makes it, you know, the layers of flavor. It makes it just a better taste. And then involved with the cheese part, you also, in a, in a bowl like this, you mix up at least three eggs, three eggs in this bowl along with the cheese and you also add parm cheese to the mixture. You add uh, some chopped parsley and you can put a little bit more of the chopped basil in with your cheese mixture. Uh, I don't have it on my table, but it required the cheese sauce requires a little bit of pepper and a little bit of chopped garlic. Okay. The boiling begins. I put the noodle, the lasagna noodles, in one at a time. I try to separate them as much as possible into boiling salted water and right now the boiling is very rapid which is good because it takes a little bit to boil lasagna noodles. They are a, a thicker noodle and they take some time and the reason why I'm separating them is because I don't want them to stick together and uh, in the while they're boiling. They might they do have a tendency to stick together. So doing eventually they all become uh, they slink to the bottom of the water. But I start them out like this because I like them separated. And uh, let's see how how many noodles do you use? Well, I use, I really don't use a whole box of noodles. I use, I kind of measure the pan and I probably use about between 12 and 15 or 16 noodles. Depends upon the size of your lasagna pan. My lasagna pan happens to be a little bigger, so I'll probably use, you know, more noodles. I always cook more noodles than I need because I don't want to be short and have to make things stretch things if you know what I mean as far as noodles go. Anyway, so I'm going to put in, I'm going to go over and get some more noodles from another box and uh, I'm going to use those. So Instead of getting the sausage, I like to get the sausage that looks like this and kind of looks like ground beef. It's just so much easier to break up after it starts cooking in the pan. So I thought I'd show you the kind that I get. And remember, it's mild Italian sausage. If you use the hot stuff, it's usually too hot even for me. And I love spicy food, but it's too hot even for me. So I'm gonna go over to the stove, flap it in the pan, and, and start, start the fire. And another kind of important thing that I have found over the years is while I am making the sauce, I start the water for the lasagna noodles. And guess what? They end up finished around the same time. So you don't have to sit there with your sauce all cooked and you're waiting and waiting and waiting for these little stupid lasagna noodles to cook and bake and boil. And you're wondering, when is this? Have you ever watched a pot boil? Well, that's what it's like. So I start the process for the lasagna noodles at the same time that I'm making the sauce. So that's what I'm about to do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is just another shot of the meat after, it doesn't take very long to cook, as you can see. Uh, some of the meat is still pink, but I do like it all the way thoroughly cooked. And look at how, you can see how just chopping away, making the pieces small, um, it's just the better way to go when you're making the sauce for lasagna. And I just wanted you to see it, that's all.
up now? What? Dan is giving me a cue for, I guess, watching water boil. I don't know. Let me know. Okay, what's... we're rolling. Okay. Dan says we're rolling. So what I'm doing right now is I'm emptying all the grease from the Italian sausage. I empty all the grease into a bowl or a jar, whichever, whatever you have, and you try to get most of it out. And you don't want grease in your lasagna sauce. As you can see, if Dan will come over here, as you can see, we we have quite a bit of grease in our in our bowl, and. Uh, also, I want you to see the noodles boiling. Stir the little, noodles. Watching noodles Eat boil. Watching noodles boil is like watching boiling water or watching time on the clock. Okay. Ingredients. Oh, okay. Tell me when I Go. Supposed. Okay, right now I'm adding, because the meat is cooked and I have beat it to a pulp with my wonderful wooden spoon. I am ready to add the sauce ingredients which includes this crushed tomatoes and I'd like to get every ounce out of a can that I can and the reason what I do is I take a little spatula and I scrape all the sauce out of each can and get as much as sauce, get as much of the tomatoes as you can out of there. And uh, I don't know why I feel like I'm a stickler for that, but anyway. And then I add the diced tomatoes. And once again, scrape out what you can. Every single solitary tomato. Even if you have to use your fingers. There we go. Here's the second second can. Good deal. And here we have the, uh, I put the whole can of tomato paste in. And I'll, in a minute, I'll tell you why. Uh, as soon as I get all the tomato ingredients in the pan, I stir, stir everything up. And uh, then one of the key points to how I personally make lasagna is the consistency of the sauce. To me, that's the most important part. I mean, the taste is important, but it's also important to have the right cons consistency. So I've gotten all the tomatoes out and now I'm going to take my trusty wooden utensil and stir, stir it all in so it's evenly distributed hopefully. You want the meat to really get every bit of sauce it can because again you're looking for layers of flavor. You're looking for consistency and layers of flavor. And the time frame for this, oh, this will probably take half an hour before I get the right consistency. Okay, now that I've, I feel that I've gotten the tomatoes and the meat distributed, I'm going to start adding, I'm going to start adding the chopped basil. You can see my knife skills are still with me. I should have paid attention to Dan, I guess, all those moons ago. Another thing I like to do is I have a little jar of basil leaves, and I'm old-fashioned, and I guess I, you know, just started using fresh herbs just a few years ago, and I used dry herbs most of the time, so I'm kind of nostalgic for the, <laughs> for the old-fashioned. 
dried herbs, and I probably will add about a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon. And then I take my trusty wooden spoon and I stir that all in. Every time I add ingredients, I stir it. I stir it all together because I think if you wait too long, and I just like to stir ingredients in one at a time because I think you get a better flavor that way. And after I'm putting this in, guess what I get to add next? I hope you like this part. I am going to add, to get to the right consistency, here's what I get to add next. I'll tell you, this sauce is okay, but it's, it's, it's not perfect right now. You can see how thick it is. And guess what? I'm going to add some Pinot Noir, one of my favorite wines. You can use Malbec, your favorite wine, or you can use Cabernet Sauvignon. You can use Merlot, whatever flavor you have in the house. So here I go, and I, I don't really measure as I go along. I just, again, what you're looking for is consistency. So I add a little bit at a time. And I, again, here we've added something new, and I can see that I can add some more because it's not the consistency that I, that I like. It's still a little thick for my taste. I like it to be, I guess I like it to be juicier. So right now I'm going to add, like I said, and really pay attention to just adding a little bit at a time and see how you like it as you go along. That would be one thing. I'm just going to add a little bit more and uh, when I'm through with this, what I also like to add, and that to me, adding parm cheese from just one of these jars, I again, I add, after I add the wine, I always add a little bit of the parm cheese, which I'm going to do right now, and I just, again, I add a little bit at, the, at a time. After every time I add wine, I add just a little parm cheese. And I stir it up, and I let it, I leave it alone for a few minutes. And I see, again, the consistency. And please, Stir everything up so that it's always evenly distributed. I'm going to let this. I'm going to let this cook for a while. And what I do is I, I've cooked the meat. I started the meat just when I had meat in the pan. I used medium heat on my stove. Every stove is different. I started with medium heat, and uh, right now, I, I'm still using medium heat. And as time goes on, once the sauce begins to simmer, I'll turn it down to probably between medium and low. And uh, the time frame, I'll have to let you know. It's kind of different every time. It depends on the day and how you feel that day, kind of. Okay. Oh. So if you notice the consistency of the sauce, which I think is one of the most important things is a little loose at the moment so I'm going to add more cheese to it to get it to the consistency that I like. Your consistency might be different than mine but I'm going to show you what I think is a good consistency for this sauce and if you add a little more parm cheese That helps. And besides, guess what? It helps with the flavor. I'm going to stir it in, and I I have the stove between medium and low, and I'm going to let this simmer for uncovered for about another 20 minutes. 
and we'll see what it looks like after. And in the meantime, don't just leave it. Just come and stir it every few minutes just to make sure that nothing on the bottom is burning. So, you know, I think I'm going to add a little bit more cheese. Just, just a tad. <laughs> Whoa. How do you like them apples? Okay. We're rolling. All right. Tell me when to go. I guess you don't really need to see me draining noodles into a colander. But there's, ooh, how nice. Nothing stuck to the pan. Must be the pan. That's great. Anyway, I what I do with the noodles to get them drained thoroughly is I shake them up and I turn the colander just to get rid of the water, the hot water, and uh, and you know they're kind of heavy. You could, but you can still use one hand and. It looks like most of the water has drained, so now, because the noodles are boiling hot, I'm going to spray a little cold water on them so that you can handle your noodles, because it's not going to be that long before we're going to put the lasagna all together. And uh, so you're going to spray some... And the reason why I spray cold water on them is so you can handle the noodles. And if you didn't spray cold water on them, they stay hot for quite a while. So, that's what I do. Now, not that it's important to see me do this, but I, I don't know. It's a step. It's a step. And I shake it around because you don't want a lot of water in your, when you're putting your lasagna together, you want as much water out of here as possible. You don't want... So I spend a couple of minutes shaking the noodles and turning it because sometimes more water is on one end than the other and the noodles... You know, I think I think that's it. Okay. I just wanted to mention uh, something about the sauce. It it did cook for another, it did simmer for another 20 to 25 minutes. And then after that I turned the heat off and I just left it alone because it somehow, magically, I know it's science. Of course you know I'm not a science major, but it gets to be the correct consistency for me and as you can see it's not real loose and it's not real tight it's just sort of in the middle and that's what I call the proper consistency and uh, the, while this sits, while the sauce sits I'm going to go ahead and uh, Get re I'm getting ready to make the cheese sauce that goes in between the layers. And I'm going to start with the ricotta cheese. I'm going to add some cottage cheese. I'm going to add um, probably about a half a cup of the same parm cheese that I've been using with the sauce. Container. Apparently I like a lot of cheese, cheese sauce. And again, this has to be the right proper consistency. So I'm going in order to break it up just a little, I'm going to add some cottage cheese, probably probably about a cup of 
of cottage cheese. And the reason why I'm doing that is I like, the again, the layers of flavor. But cottage cheese is a little looser. It is going to help blend everything together. So I'm going to add probably, I'd say, about a cup of cottage cheese. And once again, I'm going to, as I go, I like to mix things as I go because I think you get a better distribution, to use that word again. And uh, so you can see that adding the cottage cheese was a big help with making the ricotta cheese a lot looser. And I'm about ready to add, I use the jarred, I use the jarred minced garlic because number one, you know, if you chop it yourself, I mean, that's fresh and it's good to use fresh ingredients, but I can't stand the smell of garlic on my fingers. And also uh, with the already chopped garlic in its own jar, you can buy it at any store, Rayleigh's, Smith's, Gar uh, grocery outlet, Walmart. Anyway, I add about, I'd say about two teaspoons of garlic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add at the same time, because they're small amounts, I'm going to add some pepper to this. And I'm going to add two medium-sized pinches. And as always, I'm going to add the ever most tiny, tiny pinch of salt. I don't know, there's something about salt that I just have to add to practically everything. So I'm mixing as well as I can with another, I love my wooden spoons. Uh, I'm mixing this as, as well as I can. And I'm getting ready to put in some char chopped Italian parsley. I like Italian parsley because it's flat leaf and I think you get more of a flavor from it. So I have my knife and I'm just going to chop it off the end of the bunch. And I put a liberal amount in. If a little bit is good, I guess a whole bunch is better. And again, you're going to see my lacking in chopping skills, but you know what? I'm just a regular guy trying to make a meal. That's all. And I could learn some more knife skills, and maybe I will. Because when you're making a video, you know, like I said before, you want to put your best foot forward. So now... Now that I've chopped it a little, I'm going to chop it a lot. And after I get through chopping, I'm going to, of course, mix it in with my trusty handy dandy, handy dandy spoon. And I go ahead and use the knife as a, helps me put in the we put in the parsley into the cheese mixture and I'm probably giving Dan nightmares about the way I chop and use his knives but to another day that will be a discussion on continue starting now okay here we are continuing with uh, blending the chopped Flat leaf Italian parsley. Anytime you can get Italian parsley, take it. It's really the better, it's really the better one. Just my humble opinion. Okay, you can see the consistency. It is spreadable, but it needs, here's what happens. It, it needs to be looser. Also, I'm going to add about, I'd say about a third of a cup I'm adding about a third of a cup of handy dandy parm cheese again. Guess what? Another layer of flavor. So I sort of eyeball 
measurements as you can see. But if you want to go ahead and measure, go ahead and measure. You'll see that uh, the consistency is still fairly tight, but since I added the cottage cheese, it's not as tight. I'm going to continue to blend it together because, and be sure that you scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl. And now you can see the consistency. Still a little tight. You could, it's too tight to make the cheese sauce for the lasagna, for the layers, between the layers. So what um, I'm going to add now is probably, I see what the consistency is like, and then I decide if I'm going to add two eggs or three eggs. And I have a bowl here and a fork, and I'm going to go ahead and mix the eggs in the bowl with a fork. And for some reason, I feel that because of the size of the eggs, they're supposed to be large, but they look kind of medium, don't they? Anyway, I'm going to add three eggs. I have a fourth one here if I need it, but I don't think I'm going to need it. So I'm mixing the eggs, and I, you know, sometimes recipes say, oh, just beat them a little bit and all this, but you know what? I like to beat them a lot. You know why? Because they blend better into the cheese sauce. <clears throat> may seem like a lot of eggs to you, but when you are to the point where you need to put down your cheese sauce between layers, it's going to help be able to spread the cheese sauce a lot better. At least that's what I think. So, I'm going to Go ahead and add this, and uh, hopefully it'll work okay. Now this probably looks like, oh, this is never going to work, but guess what, you have to have patience and have patience to blend this together. As you can see, the cheese sauce is becoming looser. Right now, this is how it is, and it's very spreadable, very spreadable. And when we get to that part, I'll show you how instead of using one of my handy dandy spoons, wooden spoons, I use a fork to spread the cheese sauce it's just so much easier and spreads so much better. So I'm just going to use the same fork that I had to beat the eggs. Now, I know at the beginning of this, it looked like a lot of eggs, and it probably looked like, how is that ever going to blend together? But again, you have to have patience, and you have to keep blending until, it's, until you think it's all blended together. And I think we've reached that point. So now I have all the pieces. I have the lasagna noodles are done. The lasagna sauce is finished. The cheese sauce is finished. And uh, of course you're going to need on top of the cheese sauce on each layer you're going to have to have your handy dandy mozzarella cheese. Now you can grate your own if you want and I understand that when you grate your own it's probably tastes fresher, but I'll tell you something. If you've made as many lasagnas as I have, you're going to go ahead and get this already grated mozzarella cheese bag. I haven't noticed any difference in flavor over the years. I've been, make, I've been attempting making lasagna for almost as long as, Tracy, you have been alive. So we know that's a little bit over 50 years. Here's to you, Tracy. I hope you enjoy this video. Anyway, I'm going to take a sip of wine, then I'm going to assemble the lasagna. 
As you can see, we're nearing the end of the lasagna making process. A little fortification, if you get tired near the end, it's nothing, there's nothing like a glass of Pinot Noir, or in your case, Tracy, a nice glass of Malbec. I'm about to assemble the lasagna, so here's a sip to you. <clears throat> I have my gigantic lasagna pan that Don, Don, see? What happens? Dan got me last year at a place in Trekkie. So what I'm, I'm just going to put a little bit of the sauce on the bottom of the pan. Very little. Just a little bit to kind of cover up the pan. Okay, got that on the bottom. The next thing I'm going to do is use, is use the noodles. That's to begin the first layer, and the noodles look like they're stuck together after they've cooled, but guess what? They're very easy to take apart. You don't have to worry about them sticking together. Dan was wondering if they were stuck together, but I tried to assure him they're fine. So. What I would like to do is show you the first, the first layer, and then move on to the second layer. There are two layers, as I'm sure you know, Tracy. And I overlap the noodles because I like a, I love the pasta part as well as the sauce, the sauce part. I love pasta. I look like I love pasta, don't I? Anyway, I've added the first layer of noodles and I'm about to place the cheese on top of the noodles. That's the next step in assembling this. And, it, and I do have a lot of cheese, don't I? Yes, ma'am. And this is where a fork is easier to use. A fork is much easier to use to spread the cheese. It's almost like you're frosting a cake. And, and uh, what I like to do is I like to get it to the edges. I don't like to miss any parts whatsoever. And blend it so that the pasta, lasagna noodles are covered. Here I have a little curl on this piece of pasta. Oh well. I'll just do my best to put the cheese sauce over. And uh, see. I like to spread it as evenly as I can. I see I have more on one end than the other. So I'm going to scooch some over to my other end. Okay. That's that. Now here comes the sauce part. I like to make as little a mess as possible. So I go ahead and I put the pan of, of the red sauce right next to the pan of lasagna. And so that I, in the process, I'm not making a mess. And as you can see, I'm spreading the sauce over the first layer and I again I'm using the same fork to kind of spread. Forks just seem to work better when you're in lasagna working with lasagna and again you're trying to get an even layer. You're trying to get an even layer. And the next step is I take my big bag of mozzarella cheese and holding it as steadily as you can. And, I, and I'm not 
chintzy with any of the ingredients. That's one of the factors in cooking. Don't be, I hate to use the word chintzy, but don't be chintzy with the ingredients. That's not a very good word. I could use a better word, but that's what I mean. So now I'm, that's why I have a big bag of mozzarella cheese here, so I knew I had enough, more than enough. So now you're watching me spread the mozzarella as, again, as evenly as possible. Don't you love mozzarella? Oh, so good. Don't you just love cheese? I remember, Tracy, you... What is the name of that cheese, that Fontina? The first time I ever ate Fontina cheese is because of you. It's one of my most favorite cheeses. You made a great salad that had Fontina cheese in it, and I've never forgotten it. So anyway, this is the layer of mozzarella. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the second layer with the noodles. And as you can see, the noodles look like they were stuck together, but they unstick pretty well. And again, look inside my colander, and I do have more noodles than I will need. And uh, hopefully there will be a little sauce left, and I can cut up these noodles, throw them in the sauce, and have them for a snack. Wouldn't that be good? That's what I've done sometimes. It depends on how much... I've made. But I again I like to overlap I like to overlap the noodles and you think oh these noodles are gonna stick together and tear apart and all this. Nah. They're pretty good. They're very flexible as you can see. And I do overlap them as I said before because I just love the pasta part as well as the cheese sauce and the red sauce. So, and I press it in, and I think with the amount of sauces and things that I've made, you can see that <laughs> you need a big lasagna pan, and uh, I'm gonna throw the rest, I'm gonna spread all this on, the rest of the cheese sauce, use my handy dandy fork, when you use the fork to spread the sauces, it's really like icing a cake, in a way. And uh, I'm going to get all the sauce I can. You know what? I almost forgot the second layer of meat sauce. How could that happen? After doing this for over 50 years. So, here we go. It really smells good. And one of the things about making lasagna is if you make it ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator, it can last for maybe three days, believe me. And, the, and one of the reasons I like making lasagna ahead of time is because when you're ready to use it, the lasagna just comes out so much better. And again, I'm going to use my fork to spread. Again, making it even. Yeah, try to, if you, if you ever use this recipe, um, I recommend making it ahead of time. If you're going to have dinner, a lasagna dinner on a Thursday, Make this on a Tuesday, and then the day of the dinner, you don't have to work so hard. You can kind of sail through it. Okay, now we're ready for another sip of Pinot Noir. The darn ball on my Santa hat keeps hitting my cheek, but I'll persevere. Now we're ready for the final, final, final assemblage. This is wonderful.
shredded mozzarella. I wish I knew how to speak Italian. I know my grandma, Amalia Lago, she, she taught us, when we said goodbye to her, she taught us to say tevido. So we'd say tevido. And she thought that a funny word that we would like when Craig and I were little kids was raspo, which means frog in Italian. And then one more word that she told us about, she, my mother would sometimes say, my mother, whose first language was Italian, by the way, anyway, she, she, my mom would sit down in a chair and say, I'm stufa, and that means I'm tired. But Grandma Amalia Lago taught us how to say that. My grandpa used to, uh, when we were little kids, when Craig and I were little kids, he used to put us on his knee and sing this, we go to chuk 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 ka bayo, na nen na fin na mayo, na nen na fin na tina, brio brio brio. And what he was saying is, we, he he used his leg as a horse, and he'd go to chuk 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 ka bayo, meaning the horse was trotting along, and all of a sudden it would start to run, and he'd go brio brio brio. Anyway, this is it. This, I press the cheese down. And I eventually put it in the fridge, but I'm going to let it sit before I cover it. I cover it uh, in order to keep it in the fridge. I cover it with saran wrap over the top first, and then I put a large piece of aluminum foil over the over the uh, over the saran wrap, and you bake it at 375 degrees. I would say for about 40 to 45 minutes. Again, it depends on your oven. And uh, my oven, I go for about 45 minutes. And then when you take it out of the oven, it has to rest for at least 15 minutes. And the first piece is always the most difficult piece because it you want it to come out in one big square. Well, it doesn't usually. It comes out in a sort of mushes together. So that's one of the reasons why you want it to sit for at least 15 minutes, maybe 20, but I, I go about 15 minutes. And then the first piece is always mine because it doesn't look the best. But the rest of the pieces usually come out very well. And if you have any leftovers, just get your best plastic container and place it in there and after it's baked you can keep it for another couple of days after it's baked. This has been one of the most fun things I'd like to wish you the best Christmas The best Christmas, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to the most wonderful daughter. I love you.